Good evening, everyone. So I get chatting to Shannon Mishka Bodraj in a few minutes. So I'm just going to invite Shannon onto the chat. So I've just sent her a request. Today is International Youth Day and we are celebrating the youth. So I had quite a lineup with inspirational youth doing incredible work out there. So I'm just waiting for my guest. And once she joins, then we can get chatting. Please drop me an email on redcornerchat.com and we can get chatting because you will never know who can inspire. Hello, Shannon. Hello, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Yourself? I'm well, thank you. You look all green. I love that. I love that look. I just found an excuse today to dress up. I'm so excited. And then you can see I'm in my own red corner. <laughs> I love it. You know, it's, it's so weird because I've been talking to so many people and when I see the backgrounds of the red wall, I love it. I love it myself. Red is my favorite color. It's such a positive color and I love it. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> so Shannon, um, do you want to tell everybody who is Shannon? Okay, Shannon is the current Glow TV Miss Universe South Africa. Um, Shannon is also the managing director of Physio Unlimited, the CEO of Shannon B Dance Academy and Bolly Bix Aerobics, which is a woman empowerment class. And what is Shannon? Shannon, there's nothing Shannon can't do. <laughs> I like that. I like that unstoppable Shannon. That's me. I don't stop at anything. And that's what will always be part of my character traits. Uh, that's just who I am as a person. There's nothing I can't do when I wake up every day. That's my motto. There's nothing I can't do today. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, that's that's wonderful. positivity out there. <laughs> Shannon, just tell me about your titles. What inspired you to actually enter pageants? Um, I, well, this is my second pageant. I've done two pageants in my entire life. One was when I was 13 years old. And that was the Teen Miss Phoenix. I won that pageant. Uh, at 13 and then I kind of love the whole you know you got to go to rehearsals you got to get your outfit ready uh, but the most important thing I love about pageants is that you get to share your message and your vision and inspire people around you and that's what inspired me to do this one this one was a bit different last year uh, around Feb so I was actually contemplating do I do it do I not do it um, because, you know, there's this whole stigma attached to pageants, like uh, a lot of uneducated women do it, which is not true at all. So I also want to say, <laughs> you should know the stigma around it. You do it as well. Uh, so I said I want to break that stigma. And I also want to be part of, um, part of a platform that can show my vision to a greater database of the youth, the women, everyone, basically. Oh, that's good. Uh, well, you're doing such a great job. You know, when I see you out there on social media, I just see this confidence, this women, and I, I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Well, it, I wasn't always a confident person. I was, and nobody believes me when I say this. Uh, I still get the worst stage fright, <laughs> you know, going on stage. No one believes me. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, um, I learned to deal with how uh, shy I used to get. Um, and I also had like a social anxiety. I would be so nervous to give a speech or whatever. And then I just said to myself, you know what, there's a reason why you destined to be on a path that's asking you to be on a platform to give a speech or to be on TV or to be on stage dancing. Uh, so you need to set an example. And that's how I basically got into the whole thing. And yeah. So I like that messaging. You know, I, tell me about how you were just 
inspire the youth that's watching you right now? What advice would you give to them? I think the biggest advice I can give you is that don't listen to the opinions of right um you see a lot of times when you feel that you are targeted and this is so true people tend to prey on a weak minded person they tend to target you they tend to demolish your spirit and they also tend to say you know what this person here would listen to everything i say so let me put it out there and be nasty so i want to say to everybody do not don't think that you are you are not capable of giving yourself the advice that you need every time you're going to put yourself in a situation that you're going to say you know what um this person told me that i'm fat uh so i'm not going to eat food today you know you don't think like that you need to say you know what this is me i love who i am i'll try to be healthier that's how you can take it to the pinch of salt i'll try to be healthier I'll try to incorporate uh, a better lifestyle but I'm not going to change who I am and I'm not going to judge myself as fat. You see when people tell me that like people ask me they said um you're not a skinny girl so why did you do pageants? You know you're quite voluptuous, you're quite outspoken. They ask me and I had the question asked many a time before and I said to them my weight incorporates all the education I've had over the years, <laughs> right? It incorporates my titles it incorporates me as a person it incorporates every ounce of inspiration that i give to people so if people cannot handle that and they feel that you are just that then you know what i think that that's just such a close minded attitude and you need to surround yourself with a more positive um diaspora of people and just avoid every bit of negativity that you possibly can people will always tell you that you know what you are just not enough and you think too much of yourself but i'm sorry i think much of myself because i know the worth that i put into myself um i know that if i have to get into a friendship now at this point in my into a relationship for example i know exactly what my worth is so i won't accept somebody you know treating me anyhow or telling me you know what uh this is how you deserve to be treated because you're just a nuisance of a person or whatever because i know my worth so know their worth i think that's the best form of advice i can give you just be the most authentic unapologetic version of yourself and you will attract the people that's not you want them to stay the people that's meant to be in your life rather I like that. I really like that. Shanna just tell me um you were going up and uh, you were teased and um, mocked and ridiculed and bullied. How did you handle rejection? Um you see at the time I did not understand that rejection would be something that's going to help me be more confident. Uh When I was rejected in school for example like when I was in high school a lot of girls hated me because they felt that I was a goody two shoes and uh I had this whole um talkative vibe going about myself and I wanted to be involved in every activity and uh so they didn't like me for that I had a lot of friends that that actually were backstabbers and that taught me a lot rejection for me was very bad i took it very badly uh being very young but then i learned in school there's a reason why uh people do that uh and i said to myself if people are rejecting you of them not meant to be in your life that you are meant for greater people so i always never got on with people my age it happens I I have like maybe one or two uh, people that I converse with that are my age. I always got on with older people and people that are of a higher maturity. I think for the same reason because they have that I didn't want to be uh, someone who's just part and parcel or to follow the numbers or whatever. I wanted to do something and I wanted to excel in it. So now if somebody says how would you deal with rejection compared to how you would have dealt with it in school I say rejection is God's way of showing you that you meant for something that's greater than your vision something you can't see right now but it's also a time like when your friends leave you for example or they do something nasty to you 
uh, and later on you think you know what this is why it happened it happened for a reason so rejection is always for a reason so basically it's taught you a lot when you pick up the pieces you grow on your learning from experiences and you also do in such a way that you can choose how you want to be when you grow up yes absolutely that is that is such a great message you know i think for everybody out there just uh, it's it's basically worth a positivity you know you just hang out with positive people who are really uh, and appreciate you for who you are and want you to grow absolutely like um now if you ask me what my friend circle is um i join a bunch of people that oh, like men and women that are like probably like from 25 and older people that are like um career orientated uh people that uh that understand more than judging they accept you for who you are uh if this is who you are as a person then they don't have anything to say about you but rather they they feel appreciative that you are in their company so that's the kind of people i surround myself with and uh, it's mostly people that have inspired me uh there's some days that you know you feel so down and you feel so out like you know what i don't have a go to person uh but that's okay because you invest so much in yourself that you don't need a go to person absolutely i told you totally agree with you um you know me for one i have a lot of acquaintances but i don't have friends uh because i choose that very wisely i have a limited number of friends um, i think for me it's more important to spend my time with my family because they're close to me and i can trust them because you just can't trust people these days they want to stay in the back i think it's uh, just so difficult yeah no i said that's so true about family um you know it's so important to have a good family structure uh there's so many people that don't have that good family structure and i won't even lie to you right now and I, my family is watching so i'm not saying this only because they're watching <laughs> um i have such a good support structure within my family uh from my parents to my uh, brother to my cousins they like if i had to open a business for example when i started doing several things they would support me and share the posts and spread the message as if it were their own and that's how i feel family should be and friends should be as well uh but you see you don't get that everywhere because everyone's mostly like you know what i need to be better than this person but i'm so grateful that i have it within my family so what you're saying is correct Well, let me tell you something, Sharon. I have exactly the same thing. I would post something, and nobody would like it. But I know they're doing it. I know they're talking my own part. It's okay. But don't it's okay. Don't you believe that the people that actually don't like your posts, don't share your posts, and act as if they haven't seen it, are the people that pay the most attention to your posts. And um, you know that. You know what you don't have to like my posts for me to show me support like that I feel so privileged that people find me such an inspiration to not like and share my posts and they're looking from a distance actually so uh, it's it's perspective you know you got to have the right perspective about it so that's how i see it But that's fine. That's also fine. You know, it's the same with the live videos. You see, there's a limited number of people that are doing it now, but you look at it a day later, and then you have a thousand views. You know, so, you to see live, yeah. Yes, but it's fine. It's okay because you know we draw a lot of inspiration, and uh, you know I think of it as jealousy because those are the people that actually make us want to do more. Absolutely, absolutely. And you think, so, you, well, so, yeah. Okay, now you go first. <laughs> no, you go. No, I was saying um, I like the whole thing. Like you see, people don't want you to succeed. and i love pro- i love proving people wrong it's in my nature i'm a warrior kind of person i love proving someone's opinion about me wrong and when i wake up i like the people to say oh she's up again so that's basically it <laughs> you know the saying that goes is um when she puts her feet on the ground yes the devil says oh crap she's up <laughs> that's me 
Um, there's another thing. I'm getting another bit of character on my side. Um, I think you're picking that up as well. No, I'm not. There's no interference here. Okay, because I can hear myself. I can hear an echo. Um, Shannon, just going back to your LB3, uh, why Lord and Lord? I just want to know, you know, what's your message out there for you that you actually want to study law? Okay, so why law? Um, so when I was growing up, I wanted to either do teaching, um, I wanted to do law, and then it changes over the years. I had a new uh, career prospect I wanted to do every day. So every day I would change my mind. I would say, you know what, I need to do teaching today. Okay, no, I don't want to do teaching. So in my high school years, though, in grade eight, I wanted to study maybe something like towards the arts. But then when I thought about it properly, I said, I'm already doing dance and I'm getting formal training in dance at the time. So I said, um, you know what, do something else. Uh, you, you, you know your work, so why don't you get into something proper? Uh, then I said, you know, let me try out physiotherapy or audiology because I said that's something that I want to get into. Uh, then when I finished my last papers in matric and it was time to, you know, get into university, I said to myself, you know what, uh, let me just apply for the sciences. So I wanted to do microbiology then. I did a whole year of microbiology at uh, UKZN Westville. And then I realized... I can't be in a lab, I, because firstly, in a lab, you have to be quiet. Yes. And I said, you know what? I wanted to apply for law, so why don't you do some research about it? And it was six months already into my degree at UKZN, and I said, let me just look at my, uh, you know, what are the options? And I spoke to my parents about it, and they were like, you know what? Why don't you see how this year goes? Pass it, and then you can change your mind. So that's what I did. I finished the year at UKZN, and then... I went on to applying for law, and then I, the only faculty that accepted me for law because um, uh, I have so much of things going on was UNISA. So I was so thrilled about it. I said, this is God's way of saying I can do so much more during my time. UNISA is amazing. Uh, my advice to the youth, <laughs> we are team hashtag UNISA here. Yes. <laughs> So I would really advise someone uh, that's watching this or uh, any of any age, not only the youth, don't feel like this is only for um, people that have just finished school. Um, UNISA is, um, it's an institute where you can work. You can do so much more. You can discover who you are as a person while doing your degree. And for people who want to study law and you're not sure about whether you are making the right decision, choose it. It's such a beautiful field. You gotta be uh, when you're choosing law. You gotta say, you know what? You gotta question your characteristics as a person. What are my strengths? So if I'm a reader, and I can swat and write like it's nobody's business. So that's what was my strength, and I can speak. I I don't uh, feel um, I don't feel shy anymore to speak. So those were all my strengths when it came to law. I also had a very big interest in terms of political law and uh, human rights law um, because of, you know, the things you hear on the news and stuff. So that's when I, I knew I made the correct decision. And now I'm happily in my third year of my LLB. I am so happy. I'm loving it. And I, I only advocate for Team UNISA. Um, so students, if you want to study, please do it through UNISA. There's no drama, no striking, no problems. You love it. Well, thank you for that. You know, I, I'm getting a lot of comments before people say there's a call. Do you have another phone or something on next to you or near you? Um, yeah, my laptop's logged here as well. I think, can you switch it off, please? Because I think that's the, the feedback we're getting. One second. Yeah, my laptop's off. Yeah, everything's off. Okay. Oh, that's better. That's better. <laughs> really? I think. I think it made a difference. I don't know. Let's hear what other people say. Uh, let's see the comments here. Uh, I don't know. Can somebody please tell us if there's an echo or if it's over? Please. You're sounding a lot clearer now. I think it was the laptop reception interfering with this reception. 
Okay, perfect. Okay, Shannon, uh, just on your business, I'm going to ask you to hear as well. So let me just do that because I'm listening to you with your oil. I'm yet to try it and I'm yet to try it. I'm not going to well, say that um, I'm missing out on trying it because I actually want to pull it today. So I'm hoping I don't get it in the end soon. <laughs> well, to be honest, um, Physio was not formulated by me. Um, I, uh, I took over the directing of it recently, uh, the managing of it, um, and it's formulated by a highly skilled physiotherapist though. Um, when I speak about physio, I speak about a brand that I have so much of passion for really because uh, apart from only being involved in the aspect of it recently, I have been using the oil for, I can't even remember how long, I think from 2014, I've been using this oil. It's so miraculous in terms of um, the properties it came with. Now, I always have a dance injury. If you ask anybody that knows me, I am so prone to dance injuries every time I'm on or off stage. There's something going on, and especially I have a problem with my ankle. I have a weakened cartilage in my ankle, but it's not such a problem. So I apply the oil and it, it helps me to, uh, to just go through the performance in terms of the, like soothing the aches. Uh, so when I recommend this oil to people, I don't recommend it more like a business kind of prospect. I recommend it more from a healing point of view. Uh, and a lot of people have been purchasing this oil uh, and telling me, you know what, I didn't know what I was missing out on. Because a lot of people say, you know what, We've been using Anika oil for years. Uh, what's different about the oil that you are now uh, promoting? And I said to them, I said, you will know the difference when you have it in your hand. Uh, so people tend to just love it. They tend to just want to purchase it. And we really have been selling a lot of the oils because of it. People are taking more and more and more. I actually don't mean to be rude, but I hope you get a migraine so you can see. <laughs> I can't believe this. You are just so not <laughs> No, no, I take it back. I take it back. But you know what? Even if you can't sleep, because I also, I tend to be such a busy body, and I'm sure you can resonate with, with this. You're such a busy body that when it's time to sleep, you're so tired, but you can't sleep. It's like a real struggle. So it's like uh, my mother laughs at me because she says I'm like an addict. But I literally sniff the oil. I can sleep so well. Uh, I don't have a problem sleeping anymore. Um, my sleep used to break at odd hours and it doesn't anymore. I'm having a full night's sleep. And if you have a Fitbit or a watch that monitors your sleep or even your phone, after using the oil and you monitor that, you'll see the difference. So it's so, um, it's such a positive thing for me to be involved with this brand. I absolutely love it and I'm just so grateful. Well, that's good. I can actually see how passionate you are about it, talking about it. I did sniff it, by the way, and it smells very nice. It's very soothing. It's very soothing. And then we have like two other ranges coming out now. Uh, well, one is already launched. It's the um, Physio Pink that is to deal with the migraines that come with it. You can also use it if you're just given birth and you know, you're having the swelling and whatever. It's not a skincare. Because a lot of people are saying, you know what, they've been using other uh, treatments. Uh, I can't man mention the brand, but uh, I said to them, it's not about uh, stretch marks. Or, or, or that's what, this is about swelling, uh, about treating migraines that come with uh, post-birth or while you're in your third trimesters. And then we have... It's the Physio Baby Oil. Oh, and it smells so good. It smells so good. So these are what's coming out in the pipelines for Physio. Apart from Physio, I am the CEO of Shannon B Dance Academy and Bolivix Aerobics. Um, so right now we're operating on Zoom, unfortunately. And there won't be a show this year, so that's what's a bit sad. But I'll tell you, everyone who's watching more about my last show if they haven't uh, been following me. Uh, my last show was at the Sibaya Izulu Theatre. It was uh, titled One Night in Taj Mahal with a Hip Hop Twist. 
Um, so that was basically our show. We love showing what the children in our community can do, and that's my vision. Uh, my vision in, in never about monetary gain. Uh, that's just the perks of it. But it's difference in people's lives. And when I look at Bolivix Aerobics, it was launched with that idea. I mean, we charge 15 rand a lesson for aerobics, which is so cheap. And, you know, it's basically to empower women who, who cannot make it to go to the gym or uh, they don't have the means to do so. So we bring that fitness level to them. And, uh, you know, now because of the whole virus and everything, I really miss it. But, uh, you know, everything happens for than before. Uh, but that's the other business prospect as well. So COVID-19 has affected your business in a big way as well. It has because uh, I won't say uh, financially because uh, the money that I used to basically make there was just enough to cover the bills of the running of, because it was a community-based company. It wasn't um, something that I was making a profit out of or was my aim to make a profit out of. Um, but COVID has affected the lives of the kids in a very grand way because these kids used to really look forward to coming to dance. The ladies used to look forward to coming to aerobics and now they're home and they tend to be stressed out. I mean, they're watching television. Um, their fitness levels are decreasing completely. They've become so technologically dependent, which is not such a good thing because everyone knows that uh, being physically engaged into an activity and sitting on, on technology is sometimes not the best option. You know, you would rather do something uh, that is enhancing, uh, enhancing your fitness. Yes, I can so relate to that. You know, when we were growing up, we, we spent our time outdoors because we didn't have cell phones and laptops and all of that. So we were very really pretty good then. Uh, these days you find the kids are either on their phones or their laptops or they're watching Netflix. I, okay, I'm a little bad out of right? Okay, I, I won't, I, I know a lot of people would see me, they, they'll be like, don't be a hypocrite. I, I'm addicted to Netflix um and whatever but also i like in the morning when i wake up for example uh i start my morning i'll i'll clean my space up because i live alone i live next door to my parents store um so i i like to have a clean space and start my day off like that so i will literally clean my entire home um i will burn incense and i'll i'll have a shower and i'll do my yoga before i do anything in my day i'll do my yoga and meditation um, it tends to calm me down and helps me to just bring a whole lot of positivity into my work day. So that's yes. what I do. Oh, that's good. So, um, so now with COVID, are you working from home? I am working from home. I'm actually um, running my stuff from home right now. Uh, I'm too paranoid about going out because of COVID. Uh, and I, I don't want to infect um, the people around me and stuff if I'm working and stuff but however uh, when it comes to people that are fetching oils and stuff like that they uh, we have proper mechanisms to you know deal with that but I don't really come into contact with people and I don't want to because I'm really scared of getting it uh, there's a lot of people that are, that are unaware that they have it as well and you can't be too trusting um, so I love people a lot, but I'm unfortunately going to have to work from home. I just want to go back to Netflix because you said you love watching Netflix. So I'm not sure if you know that I'm a reality TV star now. Yes, and, I've uh, been showing Thrivers, Thrivers TV. <laughs> yes, so, so we actually um, shot Thrivers uh, last October in Suriname and the SDK. And um, it's going to be uh, slicing from uh, December, I would say. So I think it's going to be on either SABC 1 or 2 and also on Netflix. I'm so excited because I love watching local. Anything local, I love it. Like people ask me, because I, I do this, uh, right? I don't really uh, watch SABC, but this is what I do. I YouTube it. Uh, uh, so I love watching Imbeu, The Seed. I love watching Generations. I love. I used to love watching Mr. Dingo until they discontinued it. And I love watching Siava Dilan. So local for me, I, I really love it because... One day I'd like 
platform, you know. Uh, so, what you have done in Thrivers because your um, posts have really been like psyching me up. And when they did the launch the, uh, not so long ago, I was following it and I was so excited. And I, I remember sharing your post even because I said, this is so inspiring. And I'm so glad that you don't put a limit on what you can do as well. Because a lot of people say, you know what, once I have kids, uh, I'm not going to do anything. It, my life is over. And I love that you don't have that perspective. It's such a... Uh, good influence on me because I know I would never stop even one day. No, absolutely. They shouldn't get limit. You know, they say women must be unstoppable. Absolutely. Um, I also have done a movie, by the way, and that was supposed to be released in June, but because of COVID, uh, it's going to be released at some point. Uh, it's also a local movie, and we're looking forward to that as well. Oh, then, then it's really good because uh, we'll be seeing you on the big screen, but not really big screen now. <laughs> we'll be waiting. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so that comes back to my point now. With acting. Tell us about your acting career. Um, I've done a lot of um, plays, I would say. Um, I don't recognize myself as um, an actress in a movie because I've, uh, I've done two, which I don't really talk about. Uh, because I want, when I talk about something one day, I must be proud of the project I'm talking about. So I don't recognize myself as a film, uh, as a, sorry, a film actress. Um, but if you're talking about plays on stage, live plays, I would consider myself an actress there. I have scripted my own. I've directed my own. And I was doing Thetians one recently, and then COVID came, and... <laughs> There's no show now uh, until COVID's over. So I would see myself an actress more there. Uh, I would love to do a film and a series one day. Uh, I think also when I'm not as busy as I am right now. Uh, but I'm using my entire 20s to do everything that I want to do career-wise. I want to do I want to just focus on setting my life forever so that later on I won't say, you know, I should have done this and I wish I could have done something else. So I want to see my strengths and weaknesses and I want to try everything else. But I will, I make it my set goal that I will pay, produce and direct my own movie that would be on a huge cinema screen. In fact, I will do it one day. It will happen. Just pray. Put out the positivity. Um, I wish I could be in the universe. So I it's due to me. Pardon? Pardon? I said I put it out in the universe and I'll get it if it's due to me. Out there in the universe. Believe in divine intervention. I believe in it. <laughs> yes. So, Shannon, um, what is your message to the youth? Being international youth day, what is your message? I think that, um, like I've said before, uh, when I was giving advice on what you should do, um, don't ever settle for less. Don't think that you got to wait for when you're older or when you're old enough, rather, to open a business, to do a certain career prospect. I started running my own business at 13 years old. It was obviously not a huge uh, corporate situation. But now, with physio, I said to myself, thank God I started at an early age, so I'm able to do this. Uh, and, you know, don't limit your power, because when you limit your power, then people are going to start limiting you as a person. But when you know your power, you know what you're worth, you know that there's nothing that you cannot achieve, and there is nothing that you can't achieve. Because... For example, myself, with doing my degree, with doing several other things, you make the time. There's sometimes that you're going to say, you know what, you're going to give up your sleep, but you know one day it's going to pay off. If you're going to have that goal and that mindset, you're going to achieve everything. So go ahead, do what you want to do. Um, don't let people stop you. People can advise you, but you can still go and whatever they recommended that you happens or manifest, that was your lesson to learn. So you need to go out there and learn your lessons and what's meant for you rather than taking advice of something uh, that people don't even know of. So you, and also another thing while I'm talking about advice, do not take a suggestion.
from someone you'd never even ask for advice because people can give you suggestions and they don't know what they're talking about. So be very wary of who you trust. Um, be wary of the industry. I know there's a lot of girls that, that message me and say, you know, I want to get into the modeling industry and the acting industry. Let me tell you, darling, it's very cutthroat. You've got to be so careful what you're getting yourself into. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's an unfortunate thing that there are predators out there. And I'm not saying this predators only for females. There's, pre there's female predators for males as well. Uh, so we've got to be very careful what we get ourselves into. Um, people ask me, you know, are you a feminist? I'm not a feminist at all. I'm more of a human rights uh, empowerment person. I advocate for everyone, not only the youth, not only the aged, not only women. I advocate for men as well, for everyone. Men have rights too. Um, you've got to really believe that everyone is equal as well. You cannot say that you know, we are uh, superior or someone else is inferior. Everyone is equal. And once you see it with that lens, life is going to be beautiful for you. Whatever's due to you will happen in God's time, not yours. I love it. You know, I, there's so many comments here that uh, people are saying, well, great, well done, great advice. Um, Shannon, I can tell you one thing for uh, sure is I see everybody on the same level as well. And this is why I created a chat where I'm going to be bringing in men as well, just for women. But just because of women, I'm not sacrificing this place just for women. But going forward, it's going to be open for anyone to come on board and have a chat with me. And I think it's so important to hear their views as well. Absolutely. You must know something as well. Um, you know, we tend to run the world and we want to run the world and they also want to run the world and we should never diminish them or deprive them of that power as well. And same goes vice versa. Men must not deprive women of the power and we must not deprive men of the power. We must empower each other. We must support each other. Um, that's why, you know, people say they want, they want that power couple relationship. So important because you need someone who's on the same vision as you and that supports you. Very true. Very true. There's some fun questions. Uh, do you cook? I love to cook. I cook every week something special, but I, uh, I mean like something special, but like I do everyday cooking as well. I love baking. Oh my God, I love being in the kitchen. It's, uh, it, I can go on talking about the kitchen, but I'm not just a pretty face and I say so myself. I can light the fire, I can cook on the fire, <laughs> I can still make the roti for the family, I can do the entire cleaning of the kitchen. So I'm not just someone that can dress up and do her nails, I can do a lot of hard work too. Sounds just like me. <laughs> yes, I've seen your, I've seen your jalebi and uh, your gulab jam that you made for uh, Varalakshmi uh, Vratam uh, and it was red and it was so beautiful and I think you also have something in common like me, we love red. I love red. I could do everything in red. <laughs> I think it's just a confidence boost as well. Absolutely. It's such a good, uh, it's such a good color. It's such a good aura. So, you know, it's a lot of positive energy. When I was back in Harrisburg uh, and when my husband was still alive, um, his friends used to call me the fudge lady, the fudge queen, actually, because I used to make a whole lot of sweets and they loved it. Oh my, I hope one day I do get to taste those sweet things because they look amazing when you post them. Oh, thank you so much. Well, when you in Johannesburg, just let me know. You're welcome. I will be traveling soon to Johannesburg. I have some business to do there. Uh, so I'll definitely be popping in and hoping COVID decreases drastically by the time I actually get there. And I'd love to taste your treats. Perfect. You're welcome. Um, Shannon, any last words? I just want to say thank you to everybody who took out the time to uh, view this, who's going to take the time out to come and watch this, because I know a lot of people are not watching now. Um, so when you do watch this, I hope this inspires you. I hope that... Uh, you know, you get a positive message out of this. And thank you so much for having me here. I'm so blessed to be here. I'm so grateful uh, to be on, uh, on International Youth Day, rather. It's a big opportunity for me, and I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. 
I'm so glad that you came to be invited. I'm so glad that you are on here to inspire others. And you're on a global platform as well. There was no corner chat in a global platform. Yes, I, I did see the other day uh, you even um, did, uh, I think it was a Zoom meeting or something like that with a whole lot of international people. So I know that a lot of your following is international. So um, you know what, when you are watching this from around the world, I hope this inspires you. I hope you get to know what South Africa is about. I hope we meet one day. Uh, but that's basically it for me. It's going to be awesome because as the uh, chairperson for South Africa Ladies for Nations International, I am going to be having an event in about three years' time in South Africa. So it's going to be an inspiring woman and anyone that wants to come to our event. So I would love to be there. I will definitely be there. So we're looking forward to that. And uh, all the best, Shannon, on uh, what you're you going forward. Um, I know you are looking for your unstoppable, and I wish you give the best. Thank you so much. All the best to you as well. Thank you. Take care. Okay, bye. Bye. bye.